Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV broadcast, Power Life TV channel. We're restoring families with Pastor Brian and Pastor Tasha, and we're here to give you another great broadcast. It is Thursday. Thursday. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. How are you? <laughs> Very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Have you been enjoying this series on been. love, sex, and dating? I have been. I, th I think it's been really good. You know, I think, you know, we've been giving people very practical things to look at, you know, on the dating scene, mm -hmm. but also a lot of wisdom for marriage. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people say, I want a good marriage. I want a good relationship with my spouse. But, you know, to know how to go about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is a mystery That's to a right. lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so to demystify marriage and, you know, I think we've been so blessed to yeah. have a good marriage. You know, I think that the way you start a thing can often determine how a thing progresses. Mm -hmm. And so when we made a vow at the beginning to honor God, mm -hmm. I believe he just poured out his love on mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that things have always been perfect, but things have always been pretty good mm -hmm. between me and you. Yeah. And most of the time it's been great. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't mean That's that you don't that go through yeah. times. You know, we've had times, you know, where we had to just, you know, you know, go before God, get with each other and say, you know what, this is, this is not good. You know, mm -hmm. we, we need to change in this area, but we've always been willing to grow That's it. and remain resilient. Mm -hmm. And, you know, love is definitely, you know, marriage for sure is based on resilience. Mm -hmm. It's not about how great it looks in the great times all the time, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's how you navigate through the, the hard times Yeah, yeah. that, that, become a staple in your relationship yeah. and respect has been you know the yeah. main you know category of you know growth and and love in yeah. our marriage and we have you know you said it earlier we made a decision early in our marriage mm -hmm. to be flexible you yes know, to we honor did, god to honor god and then to honor each other mm -hmm. you know and we were not saved when we first got married <laughs> we sure were we, not i mean i i think you know i don't think i know the holy ghost led us and, and guided us in our decision making and we didn't know it was the holy spirit but um it, he he helped us to honor this this sacred holy union yes and we we you know, made a lot of uh, choices at the beginning, like we're going to honor each other mm -hmm. as far as, you know, how we how we do things. And then when we got married, and I'm just repeating what you said, but when we got married, it was like God <laughs> says, I can bless this. I can bless that. I can bless this. Uh -huh. yeah. And he did. Yeah. A wonderful friendship, wonderful love, you know, affair that we have. And so, you know, as children of light, a lot of people are saying, that's what I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. And I want that lifelong love affair. Mm -hmm. I want that, you know, relationship that's built on the rock, mm -hmm. on Jesus. Yeah. You know, and I want that rock solid marriage that, you know, I want to have a best friend mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so as children of light, we find that our, our text scripture comes out of Ephesians 5 yeah. and starting in verse 8 where it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Mm. Walk as children, children of light. light. That's yeah. the first thing so you need good. to know about love, sex, and dating. Yeah. Walk in the light. And so what we are doing is what it says in the following verses. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Yeah. Finding out what is acceptable yeah. to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Mm -hmm. So we're exposing things that pertain to the light, but we are also exposing unfruitful works yeah. when it comes to love, sex, and dating. You know, we and this thing is so powerful. He says, uh, the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. You know, when you understand that... You don't, you know, 
you, your your past cannot hold you back. You know, yes, um, yes because you made mistakes mm -hmm. in your in your past, it shouldn't affect your future. Realize that you've been made righteous, mm. and and even in our like dating situation. We were trying to find out what was acceptable to the Lord. Were yeah. we saved? No. But we wanted to please God even in our actions. Mm -hmm. We had a propensity to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And that's how you should live, especially as a believer, especially right. as a righteous one. Yes. When you're more sin conscious, you are going to tend to fall back in your old ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're not worthy to have a good relationship. Yes. So you'll file it up. You know, you know this, <laughs> this, car, this car is going to go down anyway, so I might as well not take care of it no mm -hmm. no you you do your best with what you have and be faithful with the little yes find out ways to do what's right especially as a born again christian amen and so i want to jump into today because i had a conversation the other day about uh understanding the i love you word Ooh. so when you're dating and you get to a place where you recognize that your feelings have shifted mm. and now you you don't want to call this a friendship anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how should you respond how do we conduct ourselves how do you conduct yourself in a dating situation when your feelings of like shift to something deeper mm -hmm. yeah and when you're when you're Saying I love you, do you truly know what that means? Because I think a lot of times we associate love with the feeling. You you just said mm -hmm. with the feeling. The mm -hmm. feeling is shifting. Mm -hmm. I feel closer to you. I feel more vulnerable at this moment. More willing to show my vulnerability. Yeah, and more willing to show my and it, and, it, and it's easy because you you spend so much time together. Mm -hmm. You talk on the phone all of the time. You're texting each other all the time. Of course, you're gonna get that attraction and that, you know, that mutuality that you, you were so longing for. But let's deal with love. Yeah. What is love? What is love? Well, what are we, what are we talking about when we talk about this deeper area of like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what does the word say mm -hmm. about this word love? Yeah. So love is this, love is what causes us to think so about good others so yeah. love should never be something that's all about me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it should always be the thing that causes us to think of others mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. love then is to act like christ mm -hmm. when we really explore the word love and we look at a at a on a very foundational level what is love it is that thing that causes us mm -hmm. to act like christ and then love then can only be defined mm -hmm. by Christ. That's good. And so when we look at 1 Corinthians 13, we find that this is the great love chapter mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. let's see what the Bible say love is like. Mm. Right? Okay, yeah. Uh, do you want me to read it? Or? Read that and then I want to share the four uh, Greek meanings of the word love. Okay. So then... 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 says, love, is love, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. It does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Mm. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. I love that. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but it, it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Mm -hmm. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will fail. Mm -hmm. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Mm -hmm. Whether there is knowledge, it will that vanish so away. Yeah, yeah. And why will those things happen? Because one day we will be in a heavenly home. Mm -hmm. And we will need no earthly revelation of prophecies because we will know all. We'll know all. So right. it's talking about mature love at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. talking about love the at love. Its form. Oh, yes, I, I, absolutely. Love mm -hmm. that has advanced from an earthly and physical state to a more spiritual state mm -hmm. that doesn't try to attain to something but has arrived yeah, at something. Exactly. And so. When we look at that word love, what does the word, what do you, what's your revelation? So the revelation behind the word love is really the Greek meanings of the word love. And mm -hmm. there, when, when, when Paul would talk about love, he would give 
it in different meanings. Right. Uh, and they understood it because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, they had a Greek mindset. Now, the word love is, first of all, the word storge. Mm-hmm. And uh, storge or storge or however you want to say it. But it, it's, it, it, it means like a brotherly love, right. like a love you would have for a child, a baby, uh, or a sisterly love. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when, when someone says, I love my brother, I love mm-hmm. my sister, I love my, my baby, what they're saying is, I storge this, yes. this, this child, you know. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or maybe not love my baby, but I love, I, I love babies. Right. I love babies. You yes. know, I say that all the time. I, I just love babies. And you do. <laughs> you really do. I, I, I was eight years old loving babies. I you know. know. <laughs> and, and our babies, you were always just such a good daddy. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. you were the one who could put that sleeper hold on them mm-hmm. and just play with their baby hairs until they go to sleep. Yeah, and they would fight me. They would fight. They, yeah. and, 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 they, and they knew what that <laughs> they knew what that hole meant too. Because they, they would, did. They would fight the hole. Like right. uh, I think it was Zoe. Like I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think it was Zoe. Zoe used to move her legs so I could <laughs> I couldn't grab them. <laughs> but that. That storge love, because love you have for your own child is another type of love, which, which oh, we're going to talk about. Oh, gosh, yes. But just loving babies, you know, that's a storge love. Now, the next love is called um, it's called phileo. Mm-hmm. And that love is like friendship love. Brotherly love. Yeah, we, we call Philadelphia. The city the of city brotherly, of brotherly love. love. Yes. You know, so that's the kind of love that I call maybe covenant love, you know, mm-hmm. like you would have for a friend. Right. Uh, then you have the love called Eros. Mm-hmm. And that Eros is called erotic love. Yes. Now, people think Eros love is bad. It's not. It's, no. it's not bad. In, you need Eros love in a marriage. In the confines of a marriage. <laughs> I notice that all four elements of love is in a marriage mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the in reasons. In a good marriage relationship. In a good one. I can love you because you're not only my husband. You're not only my lover. You're not only the one who I am dedicated to. You are my friend. Mm-hmm. You are mm-hmm. my relative. Mm-hmm. And so in every way, yeah. I want to relate to you mm-hmm. as my husband mm-hmm. we are connected in love in so many ways so you know uh, we played about this but we said in the past you're like my sister you know, yeah, know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're like brother and sister you know and it's and it's true because there's a level of yeah. of uh that in our relationship and it should all four should be in every marriage like yeah you said. we enjoy hanging out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with each other right. in a way that goes beyond saying that this is just my husband yes that's right. This is my best friend. Yeah. This is the one who I'm not only uh, connected to in friendship, but I'm 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 related to. And when I when I think of I that, care for you. When I think of the uh, uh, story they love between a husband and wife, it's kind of like we cut up together. We do. You know. You know how Jesus. siblings cut up. You know. Yes. <laughs> and we don't play the dozens. Lord help. We don't us. play the dozens, but we do. We do crack a little. But you know, even in that. Yes. Even in the cracking of the jokes, we honor each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you you, don't, you never want to take it to a person's core. You never want to touch a person's humanity, yeah. even in joking. And we had to we had to learn that we weren't necessarily yeah we didn't uh, born knowing the things that we know now. Exactly. You know? Yeah. We had to grow into these. We things. We had to grow up. <laughs> yeah. And that's why dating for discovery is so important. And you, and you want to keep that word love out because maybe when you're saying I love you, you're saying I storge you. You're stepping into the next okay, part okay, of this okay. lesson. Well, let me let me get sir. the last part. Let me get the last. So no, the eros love is the erotic love and that's the sexual love Mm -hmm. you know that's the i i want you sexually yes and a lot of times when people say i love you they're saying i eros you Mm -hmm. i want you sexually and then the final love is called the agape love and that's the unconditional love with a decision yeah, based on decision. Yeah, it's based this on decision. Is, this is like when a when a woman says, I just wish I could find me a man who just loves me for me. All the good, all the bad, yeah. all the, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly. I wish they would just love me. Well, that is agape love. That's agape love. That's yeah. a decision. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, one of the things you have for your children. Yeah, your children may not that's always it. do what's right, but you don't stop loving them because mm-hmm. they're your kids. Mm-hmm. And that's what you want in relationship. Relationship. You want some level of unconditional love that That's says, it. I don't care what you do. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm for you. And, you know, when you look at the subject of divorce and why people divorce,
divorce, you realize that there is a level of non-decision mm-hmm. or, you know, I haven't really made a decision to love you unconditionally. Well, that's because there's not healthy boundaries. That's it. Come on. There are certain violations and boundaries that supersede the confines of what you call love mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sometimes tip into the area of abuse yeah, yeah. and toxicity. Mm-hmm. So then you have to look at, you know, we talked about love and how it's of God. You have to look at the subject of lust. Mm-hmm. Why is Eros so, you know, despised on some level? Mm-hmm. Why is it so put down on some level? And it's because lo- lust causes us to think only of ourselves. Yeah. When we're thinking about what we lust for, what we long mm. for, we're not thinking of how we get it or where it comes from. We're just thinking of getting our needs met and only thinking about ourselves. Uh, it's putting yourself really above others. I love, I love what you do for me. That doesn't mean you love the person. Right. If you only love what they do for you, then your your so-called love is actually lust. Because mm-hmm. if you can hate the person but love what they do for you, then you are obviously in the area of lust. Real, real quickly, the word lust also has to do with appetite. Mm-hmm. Most people desire what they what they don't. Let me say it like this: What's not good for them? Mm. They desire what's not good for them. It's and just... and when when you even said this just now, uh, when you're just only thinking of yourself, I had a conversation with one of my daughters, and I said, you know, when you're in a relationship, um, you always want to be thinking about them. You know, you never want to be so self absorbed that that your whole world revolves around you. Yes. You know, it's called self-centeredness. So I said, practice on us. You know, I mm-hmm. said, if there's some things that you see undone in the house, fix it. You know, there's some things that you see that needs to be addressed. Address it. Mm-hmm. Don't be thinking about, well, I got to go do this. I have to do this for myself. I have to do that for myself. And you're not thinking about anybody yeah, else. Yeah, I must, I must say that I pay attention Mm-hmm. In, in in my relationships mm-hmm. and I pay attention when uh, when when the person when I feel like all they want is what I do for mm-hmm. for them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. they want they don't really care about me mm-hmm. all they care about is what I do, do for, for them. Yeah. and so you know in a relationship like that do you truly have a relationship mm. are you like a drug wow. you know and yeah. that's not fix, what you yeah. want you don't want to be a Fix. You mm-hmm. want to be, you know, loved and 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 cherished, you know, and cared for. So if you mm-hmm. truly are submitted to God, then your body does not belong to you, mm-hmm. even though you live in it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say it again, because truth. if That's you are truly submitted to God, then your body is not your own, even though you live in it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a portion in the Bible. Uh, where it talks about your body being the temple of the Holy Spirit. And and um, somebody asked me, you know, do you have any tattoos or markings on your body? And I said, no, not really. I don't believe in defacing public property. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by that is that my body is not my own. So mm. I'm not going to put my stamp on my body. Now, if you have a tattoo or something like that, then yeah. you may not have that same revelation that I do. It doesn't say in the Bible, yeah. you know. Yeah, you're going to go to hell for having you a tattoo. Go, it doesn't no. say no, that does anywhere. Say and, that. you know, there no were. No condemnation. Even in Jesus' day, there were some people who were stamped or branded not of any choice of their own. Mm-hmm. They were branded because they were slaves. They yeah. were branded because they belonged to somebody. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't have a choice in that. But anything that I have a choice in, yeah. I'm not trying to stamp my body. My body has already been stamped by and the sealed. greatest artist mm-hmm. and creator ever, ever. Mm-hmm. So why would I deface what he has already perfected? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you said it, it. Your body's not your own. It's not my own. It's not mine. If Jesus is my Adonai, my owner, then I am submitted to his ownership. Yeah. And I don't tend to write on other people's stuff. Yeah, 
You were bought with a price. I was bought with a price. So this is somebody else's body. Mm -hmm. It belongs to him. Mm -hmm. And so when you realize in the, in the arena of lust that your body is not your own, so to use your body mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't reflect the creator. Mm -hmm. Or it, it provides self-gratification. Or provides self-gratification. This is all about me. Mm, this is my appetite. Then, then you have to say... Does your body really belong to God? Yeah. And and listen to this. This is Romans 6, verses 11 through 13. And it's saying, in essence, that your body belongs to God. It says, likewise, Romans 6, 11 through 13. You also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed mm. to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mm -hmm. mortal body you should that that you should obey its lusts mm -hmm. in other words there's a flesh here that has certain lusts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. wants what it it's wants. appetites it has appetites yeah and it says and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin mm -hmm. so in other words as long as you're using your body for lustful sin you're misusing what God owns. Amen. Come on. And so, but then it gives us instruction. But present, present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Mm. This is what I used to do, but I don't do this anymore. Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. I'm alive from that dead state. Yeah. I'm not blind anymore. Now I see. And so, as members, as your members are instruments of righteousness to God. So in other words, my body is only used for right things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is right. If you can't say that what you're doing is right before God, mm -hmm. whatever you're doing with your body, mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about sexual things. I'm talking about drugs. I'm talking about, you know, anything, any way you use your body. If it's not right, then is it an instrument of God? Well, let's let's look at the, uh, the origin, the source of it. The, mm. the origin of all uh, acts comes from the thoughts. Wow. You know, Jesus made the statement. He said, if, uh, you know, if you, you know, the word says, or the law says, thou shalt not commit adultery, but you, you have lusted after a, some, someone in your heart. Mm. That's just as bad. Mm. And what, what we need to understand about the word lust, and I believe it's in the book of this James. This is so good. It says that when thoughts have been conceived when you mm. when the evil thoughts have taken place then you have auto automatically produced something right yeah the act is just the byproduct yes of something that's already taken place in your soul exactly and so you know you may as i mentioned before have tattoos on your body and somebody mm -hmm. might say well you're a christian why you have tattoos and it's it, you could easily answer. I haven't always known who owned this body. That's right. I yeah, used yeah. to think it was me. Yeah. Well, the, it, even in just the body, the thoughts. Mm. You don't have the right to think what you want to think. Oh, and that I know is that so I know that going. That's going. <laughs> yeah, don't turn me off. Don't turn me off. I know y'all just. <laughs> but you don't have the right to think what you want to think. You don't have the right to allow your mind to go any old where and and and, and that's a revelation. Tap into any old thing because you're doing. You're feeding yourself. Mm. You're feeding the imagination of, of yes. something that's not of God. And the mm. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, mm. cast down imaginations. And every high and every thing. Every high thing. So to present my, my body as instruments of righteousness, mm. then I must have a righteousness mentality. Wow. I must have a right mentality. Yes. And if I'm thinking inferior, if I'm thinking I'm unworthy, if I'm thinking I got to do this to get them to like me, wow. if I'm thinking I got to do this to get them to look at me. Yeah, I need this attention. I need this attention. <laughs> well, then I'm not submitted to the, the righteous plan of God. And now I'm going to put myself in a position right. that's going to be hard to get out of. Because what we're going to find out here pretty soon is that you're not truly in love when you are thinking of yourself. You're not truly in love when you're thinking of your gratification. Mm. You're not truly walking in love. You're walking in, actually, you're walking in lust or you're walking in, for lack of a better word, you're walking, walking in fear, walking in hate. Mm. Because, you know, when you're not thinking of the next person, you're literally saying, I hate that person. Wow. 
And I know that's a strong statement, but your 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 idea when you're dating, mm-hmm. and, and I want to get to something else. I know you're gonna read another scripture here, but your idea when you're dating is there there must be boundaries in in, in this relationship. There there are places that we can go. Mm-hmm. And there, and there are places, places we, we, can, we cannot go. And I have to think like that. We can't go there. I, can, I have to let my mind go there, too. There are places I can go in my thinking, and there's yeah. places I can't go. Yeah. Listen to this. This is Romans 6 and 16. Now, we're talking about our bodies once again. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves, slaves to obey, mm. you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience mm-hmm. leading to mm-hmm. righteousness. Yeah. It's like, is this really written in the Bible? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is in the Bible. Mm. Listen to this. But God be thanked that though you were, past tense, mm-hmm. slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Mm, mm, mm. I was born Mm. out of that. Yeah. And having been set free free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So in other words, there was a time that I was inundated Mm. with lustful sin, lustful flesh, and I obeyed it. And guess what? I made myself a slave to Satan in Mm -hmm. in so Mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. But once I got born again, and delivered from mm-hmm. that way of thinking. Now, yeah. yeah, yeah, I become a slave to righteousness. In other words, I obey it. Mm-hmm. I obey what's right. Mm-hmm. It's second nature because righteousness is my new master. Mm-hmm. Righteousness and the right standing with God is where I am. That's where you are. I'm Amen. justified. Amen. I made an exchange. I took all of my unrighteousness and all of my lustful thoughts, and I gave it to the one Mm -hmm. who would then turn around and give me all of his righteousness Mm -hmm. and all of my high, uh, every high thought and every high thing and every wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. He gave me all of that. And so now that I have all of that, this is what I'm a slave to. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to stop right there. And I pray that you receive this word. Amen. It is so good. Here's the thing that I keep thinking of. There's a song that we listen to. By Canton Jones, I'm giving you a plug. I hope you're watching us. I hope so, too. <laughs> uh, you and your wife. Yeah, yes. it says you're cute, but you're not cute enough for my salvation. Yes. And what this person has has done is he's made a stance on loving loving God and loving himself. Yes. And, and, and that means that my body don't belong to me. Yeah. Uh, you're cute, but you're not cute enough you're for my salvation. You're not that cute. You're not my, that cute. <laughs> my salvation is much cuter than what you're trying to present me Come on with now. in unrighteousness. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna honor God and mm-hmm. honor this body that He's given me to be a good steward over. Come on. You're not an owner of the, this body. You're a steward of this body. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so uh, come back and watch this tomorrow. It's going to be good. I pray that uh, you receive something today that's just going to be able to take you into, you know, your relationship that you're in, in right now. If you're dating somebody, you know, you might want to come back tomorrow because we're going to give you some boundaries that maybe you can set practically uh, because I believe it will it'll help you. Uh, discover one another. Amen. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to sow in the time that we have. Uh, remember, we said this, every every dime that you sow, it's uh, causing us to be a portal of an anointing for relationships. Mm-hmm. And so uh, look at the uh, screen there. There's a way that you can give. You can go to our website, wordpowerchurch.com, or you can pull out your phone and click phone and click on that little a QR code, and it'll take you right where you need to go. Amen? Amen. Did you enjoy this today? This is good. Amen. Amen. Yes. We love you. Let us bless you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord, Lord make his face shine, shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We declare shalom and, and blessings over, over your life. life. And we declare that Jesus, Jesus is Lord and he is upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Amen.